Welcome to this tutorial. Here, we'll be talking about L'Hopital's rule, a rule that is used to evaluate the limit of a function that approaches an indeterminate form. Well, before we dive into solving problems to buttress the rule, let us see what the rule states. L'Hopital's rule states that if the limit of a rational function approaches an indeterminate form, okay, zero over zero or infinity over infinity, they are the indeterminate forms we are talking about. We can evaluate the limits of that very rational function by finding the derivative of the numerator and the denominator separately and then reevaluating the limits. It says rational function. By rational function, we mean that the function is a fraction. For example, a function g of x all over h of x. This is a rational function. Now, the rule says that if I take the limits of this function as x approaches, let's say, a, and what I'm getting is either 0 all over 0 or infinity all over infinity. These two forms, 0 all over 0, and infinity over infinity are indeterminate forms, all right? So when we are evaluating the limit of a function and the numerator is equal to zero, the denominator is also equal to zero, or the numerator is equal to infinity, the denominator also equal to infinity, the L'Hopital's rule is applied. So let's apply this rule now to solve some problems. All right, let's solve this first problem. This is the limit of 2x minus 6 divided by x squared plus x minus 12 as x approaches what? 3. Okay, let's evaluate it. So evaluating it normally is to plug in the value of x into this very expression. Alright? So if I plug in x equal to 3 into this function, this will be 2 times 3, 6. Just watch. 6 minus 6 divided by 3 squared is 9 plus 3 minus 12. 6 minus 6 is 0. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. Oh, this is an indeterminate form. So we can't take this as the limit. What we'll do is to use the L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this. Okay? To do this now, we are going to differentiate both the numerator and the denominator separately. Take note, this is a rational function. Under differential calculus, we use the quotient rule. But for L'Hopital's rule, we don't do that. We differentiate individually, okay? That must be noted. So the limit will be equal to the limit as x approaches 3 of Differentiate 2x minus 6, what will it be? Let me quickly show you this. If I have a function of x, y is equal to ax to the power of n. The derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx, is simply equal to n times a, that's n times a, times dx to the power of n minus 1. That is, use this power to multiply everything, then subtract one from the result. That's what we have here, okay? So applying this differential coefficient principle now on this, differentiate 2x, it is 2, because the power of x here is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. That would be 2. Then 1 minus 1 is 0. And x raised to the power of 0 is 1. Of course, 2 times 1 is 2. So differentiate 2x to get 2, minus 6 is a constant. So differentiating minus 6, it will give me 0. So I have 2 minus 0 divided by, differentiate x squared, that would be 2x raised to the power 1. 2x, okay. Differentiate x to get 1. Differentiate minus 12 to get 0. That's out. So what do we have now? We have the limit as x approaches 3 of 2 all over 
2x plus 1. So let us plug in the value of x now into this function. What will it be equal to? That will be 2 all over. Plug in 3 here. That will be 2 times 3, 6. 6 then plus the 1. So we have 2 all over what? 7. Great. So the limit of this function as x approaches 3 is equal to 2 upon 7. What will be the limit as x approaches minus 2 of minus x squared plus 2x plus 8 divided by x plus 2? Okay, direct substitution will lead us to what? If I plug in minus 2 into this expression, what will it give me? This is minus, open a bracket, in place of x put minus 2, square it. Then plus 2 times minus 2, then plus 8, all over minus 2, plus 2. Of course, this will give us um, minus 2 squared is 4. That's plus 4. Then the minus outside will make it minus 4. 2 times minus 2 is minus 4. Then plus 8, divided by minus 2 plus 2 is 0. Okay. Now, minus 4 minus 4 is minus 8. Minus 8 plus 8 is 0. Divided by 0. We are getting indeterminate again. Therefore, we have to apply L'Hopital's rule. So, the limit will be equal to the limit as x approaches negative 2. Differentiate minus x squared. That will be 2 times minus 1 minus 2 x to the power of 2 minus 1 that's 1 so 1 is here differentiate 2x it is 2 differentiate 8 it is 0 mind you my differentiation is with respect to x here I'm differentiating with respect to x so differentiate x with respect to x is 1 differentiate 2 with respect to x is 0 of course all we have is minus 2x plus 2 all over 1 Definitely, if I plug in minus 2 here, I can't get 0 over 0. Okay, so the limit is just simple now. It will be equal to, plug in minus 2 now, we have minus 2, all in brackets. In place of x is minus 2, plus what? 2. This one is nothing, we neglect it. So what we have now says, minus minus is a plus, 2 times 2 is 4. And what's 4 plus 2? 6. So the limit of this very function as x approaches minus 2 is equal to 6. Now, there are some cases whereby we need to apply L'Hopital's rule more than once. In some cases, even more than two times, up to three times. I want to evaluate the limit of sine x minus x all over x cubed as x approaches 0. Okay? So normally, we we'll just plug in 0 for x here to obtain, that will be sine 0 minus 0, all over what? 0. 0 cube is 0. Sine 0 is 0. What's 0 minus 0? Zero? 0, all over 0. We keep on getting 0 over 0. So we have to apply L'Hopital's rule to solve this, all right? Let's go ahead. The limit as x approaches 0 of, let's differentiate, differentiate sine to get cos, cos x. Differentiate x to get 1, that's minus 1, all over, differentiate x cubed to get 3x squared. Remember the principle of differentiation. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. All right. So what we'll do now is to plug in the value of zero into this expression to obtain the limit. But interestingly enough, we will still arrive at zero over zero. Let's check. Plug in zero here, that's cos zero. Cos zero minus one all over. In fact, everything here will be zero. Three times zero is zero. Cos zero is one. Can you see that this is zero over zero? 
So what we do again is to apply L'Hopital's rule for the second time. We keep on applying it until we we'll arrive at a determinate form. All of these are indeterminate. Okay, let's go ahead. So we will apply the rule again. So we have to do the second derivative of this very function. Let's go ahead. So we have the limit as x approaches 0 of differentiate cos x to get minus sine x. Remember, differentiate sine to get cos. Differentiate cos to get minus sine. So we have minus Minus 1 is a constant. Differentiate minus 1 is 0. So that one is out of it. Okay? Differentiate theory x squared to get 6x because 2 times 3 is 6. 6x. 2 minus 1 is 1. So the power of x here is 1. If you can see this very well, you can sense that the result will still be 0 over 0. Oh, sine 0 is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. We are arriving at a 0 over 0 again. What does that tell you? L'Hopital's rule will still be applied. We we'll apply it again until we arrive at a form that is not indeterminate. We have the limit as x approaches 0. This minus is a constant. Differentiate sign to get a cos. That will be cos x all over. Differentiate 6x to get what? 6, right? 6x to get 6, so I can put 6 here. Good. If I plug in the value of 0 now, it won't give me a 0 over 0. So what is this limit equal to? Minus cos 0 all over 6. Cos 0 is 1. Minus times 1 is minus 1 all over 6. That means this very function is approaching minus 1 over 6 as x approaches 0. So this is the limit of this function. So you can actually see that we applied L'Hopital's rule 1, 2, 3 times before we got the limit. That is the beauty of the rule. So I hope you've learned something right now. Now let's apply this L'Hopital's rule to solve problems involving limit at infinity. What does this fraction or what does this expression approaches as x approaches infinity? That is, what is the limit of e to the power of x all over x squared as x approaches infinity? Plugging infinity into this expression will yield e to the power of infinity all over infinity to the power of 2. That is, in place of x, we put what? Infinity. e to the power of infinity is infinity divided by infinity squared is also infinity. So this is an indeterminate form. Therefore, the L'Hopital's rule will be applied. We have the limit as x approaches infinity. Differentiate e to the power of x is still e to the power of x. Differentiate x squared is what? 2x. Okay? So if we plug in infinity into this expression, we are still going to get infinity over infinity because e to the power of infinity is infinity. Two times infinity is infinity. So what we will do now is to reapply the L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so what we have now says the limit as x approaches infinity, differentiate e to the power of x. It is still e to the power of x. Differentiate 2x, it is what? 2. Okay, now, I don't think it will give us infinity over infinity anymore. Now, if we plug in infinity for x here, we are going to obtain e to the power of infinity divided by 2. We just said that e to the power of infinity is infinity all over 2. Infinity over 2 is still infinity. Take note. So, the limit of this very function as x approaches infinity is infinity. An expression can approach infinity as x approaches infinity also. Yes, it's possible. So this is it for L'Hopital's rule. It has been explained and it has been applied. I'll see you in the next video. Keep watching.
Keep supporting by subscribing. Like the video and share to your friends and your classmates. I will see you in the next one.